This is the first lesson of the Unit 6 Biology module and we'll be looking at the biology of bacteria. Bacteria is a microorganism. Now, the reason they're called microorganisms is because they can only be seen under a microscope. Micro meaning microscopic, organism meaning living thing. Microbes can be extremely useful to humans but they can also be very harmful. There are three main groups of microorganisms. We've got bacteria, fungi and viruses which we can see here on this diagram. Uh, we've got some examples of both here, viruses, bacteria and fungi. We've also got another type of microorganisms which are the protists. Um, for example here we've got amoeba. Microbes that make up the bacteria kingdom are single-celled organisms. We can see in this picture that we have many of them. Bacteria are extremely small. They tend to be a few microns in length, which is a few thousandths of a millimetre long. But not all bacteria will look like this. This is one type of bacteria. We can class it, start to classify them based on their shape. There are four main shapes for bacterial cells. The first one here are cocci, which are spherical cells. An example of this type of, of shape in bacteria is a bacteria called Staphylococcus aureus. This bacteria can cause infections such as impetigo and also is what causes MRSA, which is a uh, hospital acquired infection. The second shaped bacteria, we've got a bacilli, which is rod shaped. This is like the bacteria that we saw on the previous slide. An example of this would be the bacterium Bacillus anthracis, which causes the infection anthrax which you may have heard of when used in terrorist attacks. Another shape of bacteria is a curved shape that looks like a boomerang, and this is Vibrio. Now, an example of this is Vibrio cholerae, which causes the digestive system disease cholera, which is transmitted through contaminated water. The last shape we'll look at is this spiral shape here, which is spirally. Now, the bacteria that causes syphilis has this shape, as does the bacteria that causes stomach ulcers. It's easy to think that bacteria seem to be quite simple, but actually they're really quite complicated. They carry out the normal functions of any other cell. You might think that bacterial cells are quite simple. They look quite simple, but actually they carry out the functions that any other cell does. Due to their small size, they are difficult to see, so they can be seen under a light microscope, but they can only just be seen. You cannot see the detail. In this slide, we can see a photograph that is quite detailed. This was taken with a very high-powered microscope called an electron microscope. And these work by firing electrons at a sample and taking an image of the electrons that are reflected back. They can magnify thousands of times more than a light microscope can and that's why we can see in much more detail. This is a diagram of a typical bacterial cell. As you can see we've got some um, features of a bacterial cell that will be familiar to you. We've got a cell membrane which controls the movements of molecules into and out of the cell. We have the cytoplasm which is a jelly-like substance where chemical reactions happen in the cell. We've also got a cell wall. Now when you think of a cell wall you might think of plants. Well actually, bacteria are not plants but they have cell walls. They're made of something different compared to what plant cell walls are made of. Plant cell walls are made of cellulose. Cell walls of bacteria are made of a substance called peptidoglycan. It provides the same function as a cell wall in a plant where it will keep the structure of the, of the cell and prevent it from bursting. Now what you may not have come across before is a cell that doesn't have a nucleus. Here, all the genetic information is contained in this loop of DNA or a nucleoid. This does exactly the same as what the DNA would in a nucleus in another cell. It controls the cell and the DNA replication. Now some bacteria will have a capsule. Now this capsule is a slimy substance around the outside of the bacterial cell and what happens is it protects it against antibiotics. 
And last of all, the bacterium have got a tail-like structure called a flagellum, or flagella in plural. This can be used for movement, where you will get a spinning of the tail, and that whip-like movement will move the bacteria along. What can make bacteria really useful and also really harmful to humans is the fact that they can reproduce extremely quickly. Some bacteria can reproduce every 20 minutes, which means that we can get food spoilage happening really quickly and also the onset of disease really quickly. They reproduce by dividing in two. This is asexual reproduction. This means that there has been no swapping of DNA. This is not to say that bacteria do not carry out sexual reproduction because in some cases they do. Bacterial cells reproduce by dividing in two. So we get two copies of the bacteria. These are genetically identical to the parent cell. This process of the bacteria dividing is called binary fission. If a bacteria was to undergo binary fission in an item such as milk, that would cause the milk to go off quickly. If a person then came along and drank that milk, the bacteria would reproduce extremely quickly within the body and the body's immune system would find it too difficult to fight off this infection due to the speed at which it has developed. And this would result in an infection developing. Now this diagram shows the process in a little bit more detail. Here we've got the bacteria and inside we have the chromosome. Now just like in, in mitosis in our cells, the DNA has to be duplicated before it can split. Now as that's duplicated, we get the cell wall of the bacteria beginning to grow inwards to allow this separation to happen. Here we've got two daughter cells produced from this parent bacterial cell. These are, as I said before, genetically identical to this one. At this point, feel free to pause this video and have a go at this, these questions on this slide. Now here we can see we've got generation number of bacteria. And here we've got the number of bacteria present. So we start off with one bacteria. At generation two, it splits into two and we get two bacteria. At the second generation, we've got two bacteria. If they split, they will produce four. If these four bacteria split, they will double and we will get eight bacteria. At generation five, they will further double to get 16. At six, we'll get 32, 64 at seven, and 128 at eight. So each time you can see that we're getting double the amount of bacteria, which obviously will get more and more as the generation number increases. So this is what the um, graph plotted would look like. So you can see that we have got quite low numbers here and as they multiply, they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger, we actually get a curve. Now we call this exponential growth curve. So as you can see, as the first few generations of bacteria have divided, we get a steep increase in the number of bacteria at these later generations. As they increase, that only gets bigger. This is where it can cause problems when we get disease. So just like any other living organism, bacteria have to obtain energy. Now, what makes them so successful as a group is that they can take energy from a wide range of sources, including the sun for photosynthesizing bacteria, dead bodies for decomposing bacteria, and also by obtaining um, energy from chemical reactions in their cells. Being able to get energy from a wide range of sources makes them extremely good at inhabiting otherwise uninhabitable areas. We've got bacteria that can live in geothermal vents under the sea where temperatures are extremely high due to heat coming from the centre of the earth out of the vents into the sea. They can survive extremely low temperatures in Antarctica, for example, where not much else survives. They can live in high salt concentrations, dried up salt lakes, for example, where, again, nothing much else would survive. This is due to the pressures of osmosis. And because of this, being able to survive in such extreme environments, 
they are extremely successful 